Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin, and I have a lot to say about long arm quilting, Instagram, cool patterns, working with great coworkers. I mean, just stay with me. You'll learn all about it. So that was a heck of an intro. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was a heck of an intro. <laughs> I have a wonderful coworker. She is, she is a light. She is, she is just a, she is a delight and she is a light. And she has only been, is, has only been with us for a year and is only going to be with us for this year that she's been with us. So she moved here um, with her boyfriend who's in residence at one of our medical facilities. And so we got Jessica and boy, am I glad we got Jessica. And she's just been so great and we love her and she comes in and she's happy and she works like the Dickens. And now it's time for her to go and we are all just sick over it. Actually, I'm not going to be able to talk about it much. But uh, I thought, what better way to celebrate her and to remind her from now until the time that she no longer has this quilt that I love her and that I'm glad that she's been a part of my life than to make a quilt for her. So, oh, I'm getting verklempt because she's so great. And this is what quilting is like when we make things for people that we care about. So, whew, get that passed. So I have, I was fortunate enough to already be on Instagram. I wasn't very active. And then I started quilting and my good friend, who's the quilter who knows everything and is so great, um, started sending me some quilt patterns that were linked to people on Instagram. And I realized like, this is what I need to be doing. So I started posting myself on Instagram and following people on Instagram. And you know how that happens. And I just got exposed to this really great quilt community and all of a sudden have this influx of images of beautiful quilts that people were making and beautiful quilt patterns that people were putting out there. Um, and there are so many, which maybe I'm going to have to talk about that in a whole other post because I have more to say about that than I should even be saying right now. So I, uh, I found the Instagram account for Susie Quilts and she's fantastic and such a thing. And this year she put out a quilt called Adventureland, Adventureland Quilt. And it's jelly roll friendly, which I didn't even know what that was. I had never even bought a jelly roll, still have not bought a jelly roll, but I just love the way it looked and it felt fresh and modern and happy. And so I decided this is what I was gonna make for Jessica. So I'm going to hold this up so you can see without further ado, those of you that quilt, you probably have already seen the Adventureland quilt. It's everywhere. It is everywhere right now. And I am so happy because I think it's beautiful. So here is, here is the, my, my version of the Adventureland quilt. And it's, it's bigger than what I can do right now. But anyway, so here it is. And it's just, it's not a complicated pattern at all. It's actually very beginner friendly. Um, and I love it on quilt patterns. One of the ways that they tell you, like, if you're up for the challenge, one of the descriptors is confident beginner. I feel like that's just the best. Confident. Is that who I am? Yes, I am a confident beginner. Um, and I will be a confident intermediate and I will be, a <laughs> I just, you know, it's like, I just think I can do it. And so I do it. But, um, anyway, so I just saw it and thought it was beautiful. And then, so I pulled out my fabric stash and I love this Navy that has the white polka dots on it so much. I actually have found a second shirt just like this and I bought it too, because uh, I just love it. And so I started with that one. So this was a men's dress shirt. This blue was a men's dress shirt. This kind of, it's almost clown stripe. It's, it's not red, but it's almost, it's almost clown stripe. And in fact, I bought it because it was so vibrant and then got it home. And I'm like, I'm never 
going to use this fabric. But it looks really pretty up against this blue. So that's a men's dress shirt. This pink is actually fabric that I had uh, from when my girls were babies and I had bought a whole bunch of pink fabric to make some something that I never did. So I had to have a ton of it. Um, and then I also had this kind of um, vermilion. And this was a men's dress shirt, this orange with the white stripe, surprisingly. Like if you, if I told you to pick the men's dress shirts, actually you would probably wouldn't have thought any of them were men's dress shirts. Um, this burgundy was a fat quarter that a friend gave me. She, they were cleaning out their house and found some fabric and they gave that to me. And then I pulled my youngest daughter into the living room and said, okay, I have this, 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 and this, and this help me get from here to here. <laughs> and so I had the yellow, we, which we put together, and then we, we needed these two middle. Um, and so sometimes you'll hear that called blender fabrics. So we needed something, we needed a way to jump from this pink to the yellow, because otherwise it was a little garish. And so we went to a, my local quilt fabric store, uh, and they have this, this is a Ruby Star Society, it's called Birthday. And I have not historically been a pink fan. In fact, I have, I wouldn't say I've been anti-pink, but I'm, I, I realize I'm wearing a pink shirt <laughs> right now. <laughs> As I'm saying, I'm not a pink fan. <laughs> but in the last, I don't know, last six months, I have just all of a sudden become where I really like pink. But this, and I wonder if it's not in part because this fabric, it, takes me back to when I was a little girl going to birthday parties and they have the cake and it's just, it has like sprinkles on it in every color, but there it's, it's, it's in every, it's in every specific color. It just looks like you poured the sprinkles for cupcakes out on the table. And it reminds me of strawberry ice cream, which was my favorite from the Neapolitan um, container. You know when you get the Neapolitan container and adults just actually do the whole thing and kids pick the chocolate out or they pick the vanilla? Well, I eat the strawberry because I'm weird like that. And now I'm wearing a shirt that's exactly the color of strawberry ice cream, but whatever. So uh, we found that one <laughs> and knew that that would blend these four. And then we struggled, struggled, struggled with the yellow, ultimately found uh, these. And they're actually two different of that light yellow. There's this one that's kind of got white flecks in it. The other was a paisley that was scrap fabric from my sister's fabric stash. So I feel like I need to modify what I've been teaching. I get men's dress shirts and I call my sister and I go to the, <laughs> the local fabric quilt store. <laughs> and then my quilting friends sometimes will just send me fabric and I will send her fabric. So it's, it's, it's a whole community. But anyway, so um, I cut strips of fabric from the shirts and the ones that weren't long enough, I pieced together uh, somewhat imperfectly, which I think is some of the charm. It's hard for me to say that because I naturally strive toward perfection and then I'm frustrated in the process. But um, I have, I'm learning so much that when the quilting happens, when the piecing happens, it hides. When it qu gets quilted, it hides. When it gets washed, it hides again. So it's really funny because the quilting hides the piecing and the piecing hides the quilting. That doesn't make any sense, but it is a truth. So got the whole thing laid out. And when I laid it out on my floor, it was like somebody threw a serotonin bomb in my living room. It just... It was like happiness in fabric. And so it has just been so much fun. Um, then there's a white fabric here, which is actually not white, it's slightly off-white. And it's um, it has a little teeny tiny, teeny tiny weensy weensy check that's um, white on top of it. And it's from, it's actually from this um, line of fabric called Make Time. And they have other fabrics that have like pins and stuff on them. And it, anyway, that's, neither here nor there. So Jessica's favorite color is actually periwinkle. And I happened to have bought a gingham shirt that was a men's shirt. And it is the most lovely color, periwinkle, which is why I bought it. I actually had the shirt before. I did not buy the shirt for this purpose. I already had it. 
And it's a throw size quilt. It's 60 by 60, um, which is a lot of binding. So I actually mined that shirt for every little bit of fabric. There's so much piecing along in here. There's like seam and then six more inches in seam and then eight inches in seam. But I thought that I just had in my mind that this is going to be beautiful. And then because I have fully bought into the really big, huge backing with a wild pattern. Um, this was the pattern that I went with. And it has everything from the front except for the yellow. And if I could have figured out a way to put yellow in the back, I 100% would have. So I would have been <laughs> tied it all in. But it is just really, and it's floral. She's a flower lover. Um, this is actually, it's not the first, but it's one of the first quilts that I have ever had professionally long armed. Uh, I keep referencing my local quilt fabric store. I go to the Zigzag Sewing Studio in Pelham, Alabama, and they are so great to me. And so I walked in and said, I had a whole plan that I was going to quilt it. And then I realized that maybe I wasn't as confident a beginner as I thought it was. And the quilting part is actually really demanding. This is one of, do you remember when I started at the beginning of this video and I said, I'm going to be talking about, okay, well, this is one of those things. I enjoy every step of the process except for making the quilt sandwich, but the quilting part, pushing it through the machine, trying, I love the curves and doing that free motion. I can do it, but when it's a really bigger size quilt, I, I'm prone to hunch and I store all my stress between my shoulder blades and I'll be working on the quilt for like an hour and then I'm a wreck from the middle of my back all the way to the base of my skull. So, and I do still enjoy it. And if I could have done this and taken all the time in the world, I might have done it. <laughs> so I would... So I went to zigzag and I walked in and they said, do you have anything in mind? And I said, curves. Those of you that quilt know that there are hundreds of quilt patterns and pantos and all this stuff that I know nothing about. So I'm literally talking out of ignorance right now, but there are all these patterns. I do know that part. And I said, I need, she is wonderful and young and happy. And I want it to have some curves because the actual design is so angular. And she said, how about bubbles? And I was like, I high five myself. No, just, just kidding. I didn't do that. And this was what we came up with. So I hope you can see it. It has not been washed yet because I'm actually still working on the binding. So I machine bind the front and I hand bind the back. Um, and you can see that the periwinkle actually just came together beautifully. And like I have said in other videos, I believe in putting a tag on it. So, well, I said that. Did I put a tag on it? Yes. Yes, I did. So I put a tag on it for her to remember me and us at our workplace by. I'm nearly finished. Going to wash it up, dry it up, and let it do that crinkly thing. So that's that. So I'm going to stand up and hold it up just for a quick second so you can get kind of a uncreased view of it and then just even though yes I know this is just one big swath of fabric and I did learn in uh, this fabric and one other very recently how to put the back together and match the print up so that's super exciting that's the Susie Quilts deal so if you are a quilter and you're not on Instagram go find Instagram and then like just start following quilters because you just get so much inspiration, so many great ideas for quilts. Some of them very, very non-traditional like this one that just are happy. Jessica's totally gonna cry. She's gonna give me a rib crushing hug and then she's gonna cry some more and then I'm gonna cry. And then hopefully for the rest of her life, she'll be able to enjoy this quilt that was made with love for her. This is the Catbird Quilts and I'm Kathy Martin. Thank you for watching.